Hello everybody, and welcome to the fourth episode of Existential Basics. I'm Mark, with the Modern Existentialist, and I'll be your host today. So last time, we covered the idea of the rejection of inherence, as opposed to the rejection of meaning, and we explored the existentialist deconstruction of nihilist absurdist philosophy. If you haven't seen that episode, I'd recommend you go back and watch that before coming back to join us for this one. Alright, so, on to agency. Fundamental subjectivity is the idea that we can and do only experience the world through the subjective lens of our perception. In other words, it's just to say that everything that we can know is empirical knowledge and anything that isn't empirical knowledge is something that we can't know. Fundamental agency, on the other hand, is the idea that because our experience can only ever be subjective, because we live a personal fiction, we're therefore, in turn, always fundamentally responsible for the things that we think and do. It's the idea that we, as agents, are always in control of ourselves, always responsible for the choices that we make and the actions that we take, and the way that we choose to affect the world. As subjects and as agents, we create the world that we experience, we act upon it, and are therefore empirically responsible for having imparted subjective meaning onto the world through the exercise of our agency. In other words, truth is value that we assign. More often than not, our idea of agency will sometimes get confused for the concept of free will. After all, they're at least kind of similar, in the sense that they deal with the same kind of subject matter. Where they differ, though, is in the context that they're used. Namely, in that free will implies a dogmatic context, whereas our idea of agency refers strictly to an empirical one. Thousands of years of heated debate have been dedicated to the idea of free will. Self-described intellectuals have been arguing back and forth for what's basically forever about whether or not people actually have the ability and responsibility to make their own choices. And yet, even in all that time, nobody seems to ever have been able to make any progress at all. This debate is framed as a conflict between the ideas of free will and determinism. Namely, whether or not these two ideas, which seem so irreconcilable, can actually both be true at the same time. Free will the idea that human beings have the ability to make meaningful, or any, choices of their own. Determinism, on the other hand, is the idea that every decision that a human being makes is just a function of either their base biological drives and imperatives, or of some kind of divine cosmic will which decides our fate without our knowledge or consent. The former is called biological determinism, the position that's taken by our nihilists and absurdists. The latter is called predestination, a position that's commonly taken by dogmatists. Our concept of agency, however, has no stake in this argument, no horse in this race, because this entire debate is actually, in reality, just a metaphysical one. In other words, this argument deals only in absolute objective claims to metaphysical knowledge, to ideas that we can't know that we know for certain. So, as existentialists, we can understand that, at least to the best of our knowledge, we can't know for certain whether or not man is truly, objectively, metaphysically free. The best we can know is that in the end, we think and feel as though we're free inside of our minds, 
and that we act as though we are free as we live our lives out in the world. And so, we, as existentialists, can feel confident in our assumption, our empirical assumption, that we are free within our means. Free to be subjects and agentive actors within an inaccessible objective world. So, Nietzsche calls it the will to power, literally our drive to express our power, and to use it to shape the world into what we want it to be. Sartre calls it, well, agency, or freedom, and famously says that man is condemned to be free. To be condemned to be free means that there's only one thing in this world that we have no choice in, no power to choose or decide, and that is in that we must always choose, that we always have to decide. You are an agent. You're always an agent, and therefore always in control, always responsible for the choices that you make and the actions that you choose to take. One of the most popular counter-arguments that people will tend to try and make at this point is this. We can't possibly always be free to choose, because sometimes we just don't have a choice. After all, there's no way that we can possibly choose what our circumstances are. We can't choose the situations that we're put in. Therefore, we're not always free to choose. So. While it is true that we're not able to determine our own situation, not able to choose or control objectivity, that's really completely beside the point. There's no claim being made here as to whether or not we have the ability to choose our circumstances. Instead, what Sartre says here is that within every given circumstance, we still always must make a choice. Regardless of the context of any situation, an agent is always agentive, and always has the ability to choose. Imagine a man, let's call him Fred, who's chronically sick all the time. He has no choice in his situation. After all, it's not like it was ever up to him to choose whether or not he'd get sick. That simply wasn't his choice to make. It was never a function of his agency. He does, however, in another sense, always have a choice, because he always gets to choose how he reacts to his situation. His choice comes in his subjectivity, in how he chooses to express his agency, and how he'll choose to deal with his sickness. He could choose, after all, to try and improve his hygiene, so that he might get sick less often. He could also choose to medicate whenever the sickness flares up, hoping that it might go away more quickly. Or he could choose to just lie down and give up, and just let it run its course. All of these are choices, and he must choose. Let's say that, one day, Fred's sickness takes a turn for the worse that it's way more serious than he imagined at first. It infects his brain, sending him to the hospital, where the doctors tell him that, because of his sickness, he's now a quadriplegic, completely paralyzed and unable to move his body. In this matter, he obviously didn't have a choice. He didn't get to choose or decide how bad his sickness would become. But still, even when he's trapped in the prison that his body's become, there are still choices that he must make. He could choose to give up, to surrender to his sickness, and lay there wallowing in misery and self-pity as he watches himself waste away. He could also choose to hold on to hope, hope that one day some doctor or scientist somewhere out there might figure out a way to save him. Or he could choose to accept his condition and learn how to live with his new life. These are all choices, and he must make a choice. 
In the end, Sartre says this, As agents, we must always choose. After all, even if you were to choose not to make a choice, you'd still have just made one anyway. The choice? To not choose. The word responsibility has two senses, two ways that it can be defined. The first is a moral one, the way in which dogmatists and nihilist absurdists both see it. They think of responsibility as forward-looking, a declaration of what individuals should do. The second sense, however, the sense in which we, as existentialists, think of it, is an empirical one. We see responsibility as backward-looking, just simply a claim that we, as agents, are each responsible for having done the things that we have done. And so, if asked, the dogmatist will tell us that personal responsibility means to be moral, to do what's right and not what's wrong, for the sake of a better future. The nihilist and the absurdist both, on the other hand, would be quick to say that personal responsibility is fake and doesn't exist, that the hope for a better tomorrow is a lie that we tell ourselves in order to try and cope with the sheer absurdity of existence. We, however, as existentialists know, that personal responsibility doesn't mean anything so special. That it's not any kind of claim to some grand metaphysical theory of ethics, not a claim to know what's right or wrong with absolute certainty. Personal responsibility just simply means that we will always have become responsible for the things that we choose to do. Because we do things in the world, we are therefore responsible for having done them. All right, so what do you think of free will and agency? What does it mean to you to be free within your means? Are we really personally responsible for all our choices and decisions? Think on that some, then let me know down in the comments what you come up with. Alright, this is Mark, signing off. Catch you guys on the next one.